Hey guys, hope you're doing well. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back. I wanted to go over how to recreate these four commonly used After Effects effects in Blender. The four effects I'll be teaching you how to recreate today are Colorama, Gaussian Blur, Turbulent Displace, and Fractal Noise. Now when it comes to Blender in relation to Adobe After Effects, you have a lot more limitation when it comes to styling your images and textures. That is applying special effects such as glows or any other effects that you could in the After Effects. Blender typically doesn't have these effects, so you are quite more limited in that regard. My one piece of advice is that if you are struggling to create a specific type of effect in Blender, it's worth just importing a texture into After Effects and creating that effect there. Now with that being said, I wanted to start with the first effect that we are going to recreate, which will be Colorama. Now to get started, I'm going to import some random image I have on my desktop that is a screenshot of one of my older visual effects edits. And this works with procedural textures, this works with images, as well as videos. So you're not limited to just image textures with this method. That being said, if I enable this collection, you can see on top the effects that we are going to recreate created in After Effects natively. So we are going to try our best to recreate these effects pixel by pixel inside native Blender. Let's get started by clicking on the plane going into the shading tab. And as you can see, we already have the image texture here. We're not going to work with alpha, so we can disconnect that. And to recreate the Colorama effect, all you need is two nodes. So the first node is color ramp. We're just gonna drop that in, in between the image texture and the principled BSDF. And we want to change the black on the left of the color ramp and bring the value up all the way to one, as well as the saturation. And on the right, we want to change the value up here and bring the saturation to one as well. And we want to change this RGB to HSV and change near to far. And there we have a full spectrum of colors that we can work with. Now from this point, technically the colorama effect is done, but we want to make it animate. So in order to do that, what you want to do is you want to add a hue saturation node and drop it in between the color ramp and the principled BSDF. From there, if you play around with the hue slider, we are now getting the colorama effect. But if you noticed, there's a hard stop between zero and one. So in order for us to have it loop infinitely, we're gonna have to add a simple driver to make that possible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this value and type the pound symbol, then the word frame, divided by 50, and then the percent sign, space one. So this pound sign here is telling Blender that we're making a driver. This frame right here is getting the current frame number of the animation. So each frame it goes by, it's gonna count up one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera. And then divided by 50 is dividing whatever frame it is by 50. So if the frame is 50, then the value will be one. If the frame is 100, the value will be two. And this, per and this percent symbol right here is actually the math function modular, which will loop back the number back to zero every time it reaches this threshold one. So now if we click off of it and press play, we have recreated the colorama effect. And as you can see, our Blender version is running a little bit faster than the After Effects version. So in order to replicate it as close as we can, what we can do is go back into this driver and increase this value to let's say 100. And now as you can see, it's playing about the same rate as the After Effects version is. And it is almost identical in the style. The next After Effects effect that we are going to recreate is Gaussian Blur up there. So I created a new plane and I'm going to give this one a new texture and name this one Gaussian Blur, but you can name it whatever you like. So I'm gonna get rid of this color ramp and hue saturation value nodes and start from scratch. From here, what you want to do is you wanna press Control T to bring up the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. 
And if this shortcut doesn't work for you, you want to go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for Node Wrangler and make sure that that add-on is enabled. Once we have the texture coordinate and mapping nodes in place, the next node that we want to add is a Mix RGB node and put it in between the mapping and the image texture. Then we want to add a noise texture and place it down right here. We don't want to connect it to anything at the moment, but then right after that, we want to connect the color into color two. We want to change this mix into linear light. We want to bring the factor all the way to one. And if you're having this black texture on the side, because you are clipping your texture, you want to change clip to repeat, or you could also change it to extend whichever one you prefer. So I'm just going to change it to extend because that would work best for Gaussian blur. That will be similar to the repeat edge pixels option in after effects. And the last thing you want to do is you want to change your scale value from five, which is the default to something that is pretty high, like 100,000. And as you can see, the effect is finished. And to modify the intensity of the blur, you have to move around this factor slider. The lower the number, the less intense the blur is. The higher the number, the most intense the blur is. Now, in order to make it look as close as possible to the After Effects version, all we need to do is just bring down this factor until it looks just right. And after we do that, the difference between the two is practically indistinguishable, except for the fact that this Blender one has noise, as you can see here. But there's no going around from that, from what I understand. You just have to live with it. But after you do renders, it won't be noticeable. After social media compression and after the cycles denoiser, won't make a difference whatsoever. Now, the next effect that we want to recreate is turbulent displace. So I'm just going to create a new texture and name that texture. Sure, I'll name that one texture. Now this next texture is pretty straightforward because actually the turbulent displace effect in Blender is very similar to the way you make a Gaussian blur texture in Blender. So we don't want to remove anything from here. All we want to do is bring down the scale value to something much smaller. Like let's say 14 would be a nice number. And if this is too much for your taste, you can bring it down even more to like, let's say something like three. And you can see we're already getting pretty close, but this After Effects one is animated and we want to animate this one as well. So in a noise texture node, you want to change it from 3D to 4D and you want to animate this W value over time. And you could do this with keyframes, but the way I like to do this in both After Effects as well as Blender is just a simple expression or driver. And we could do this in Blender with the pound sign frame and to make it not go as fast, let's say something divided by 50. And as you can see, that still is quite fast. So we could bring it down to a number like 300. And as you can see, these effects are almost identical. Now, last but certainly not least, but actually the quite easiest to recreate is fractal noise in Blender. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a new texture just name this one fractal noise. In fact, the noise texture in Blender is fractal noise itself. So all you need to do is plug in the factor into base color and we're done. But to make it look like the default After Effects version, what you want to do is add a curves effect, is add a curves node, plug it in right there. And once that has compiled, we want to bring the curves down a bit on the shadows and bring the mid-tones up. And finally, we want to bring up the detail and we want to bring up the scale to something like 20. And just to make it look exactly like the After Effects version, I'm just going to make a few more adjustments just like that. And then maybe adding a color ramp on top just to make the blacks a little bit more intense just to make it match a little bit more. And then we could pull the whites up just a tad bit. 
Now, in order to have this fractal noise animate like the After Effects version, same thing as before, you want to change the noise texture to 4D and you want to animate the W value in some sort of way. And once that has been taken care of, you can see that we have successfully recreated all the After Effects effects in Blender. I'm going to have this project file linked down below in the video description as a Gumroad link, so it will be free of charge to you. But if you want, you are able to support me with any value you like, such as $1. With this channel, I'm intending to make a lot more videography and VFX content. So if that's right up your alley, consider subscribing to see my future videos. Thank you for watching. And if this video helped you out, or if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.